Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about a subject that's becoming more and more of an issue. Um, and it's actually been delayed. We probably should have seen this issue earlier on, but Microsoft backtracked on it. But it has to do with blocking, unblocking files. Uh, Microsoft is in their attempt to block malicious attacks from malicious files is blocking the macros from running from anything you download off the internet. And if you're not already experiencing this, you will start to experience this. And you're going to start seeing um, banners when you try to open, let's say, a database, an Excel file, whatever the case may be that has macros or code in it. You're going to start seeing a banner that comes across security risk and big pink with a you know an alert button and Microsoft has blocked this macro from running because the source of the file is untrusted um, and uh, we're gonna go over what this is exactly and we're gonna look at a whole bunch of different ways that you can actually unblock files so let's dive in now some of you may not be aware of this may not have experienced this yet and you may be asking yourself what the heck is this guy talking about I have a couple articles on it, and my articles also have links to Microsoft sources and other sources, so you can feel free to review them. But very quickly here, uh, my initial uh, article on the subject, uh, just explaining, this was the original plan dates that this was supposed to start appearing uh, for various users, depending on your update channel. But Microsoft backtracked because they got so much flack back from the users, um, but it is now rolling out. We're seeing it. So we bought a bit of little, a little bit of time, but in reality, it is now hitting us. And what it is, as you can see, um, is it's going to block code, code in any file. It doesn't make a difference to the file. Um, if there's code behind it, if you download it from anything outside of your network, so basically the internet, for instance, if you receive it by email, they will automatically have the code blocked. Um, then I created a second article uh, illustrating one approach of how you can get around this um, by using code. Uh, PowerShell, for instance, uh, PowerShell commands, I go over what they are, how they work. And then I had also mentioned trusted locations and group policies. So we're going to look at all of this. Now let's, let's take a look at a concrete example. What I did here is I downloaded this file from the internet, from Rogers Access Library. In reality, I just took a random file. And if we extract it, so I have my files here. And if we open them up, and let's try to run the database, you're going to now see at the top the banner that I'm talking about. Security risk. Microsoft has blocked macros from running because the source of the file is untrusted. So the database opens but none of the code behind it will work so the event procedures etc none of that will work and the same is true for anything it could be a word document in excel it doesn't make a difference anything that has code gets blocked and you can validate this if you open up the file properties and you'll see here security and then you have an option to unblock it says this file came from another computer and might be blocked to help protect the computer. Okay, so beyond right clicking on it, how else, what else can we do to find out information about this? Well, the first thing we can do is we could launch the command prompt. And if I just copy the path, we change into that path. Okay, we can do a dir slash r. And this is one way that we'd be able to identify that for that file, that here, this guy here, there is an alternative data stream, that's what it's called, in which it has a zone dot identifier and it has some data value. So what it's telling us is there's an alternative data stream with a zone identifier and that's what's making it blocked in reality. This attribute or whatever you want to call it is what's causing us all this pain. And you can even see that there's an HTML file in the same folder, and it too has that same alternative data stream. Okay, so there's a second file, and it too is blocked. If we right-click properties, you'll see it is blocked, because HTML can have code in it. So DIR is one way. <clears throat> Another approach to getting information about this is we can use PowerShell. 
And I have a file prepared, so I'm just going to reload it. And we can use this command here. We'll use the first one where we go get the item for the file that we're interested in. And we can do, do a dash stream star. And if we do that, it will list here the fact that there is, in fact, as you can see here, a data stream. And it even tells you here it's a zone identifier data stream that's been there. And you can see here that the length for that is 91 characters. So then we could even drill down a little bit more and we could go get the content of the stream for the zone identifier. And if we run that, you'll see here that it's a zone transfer, zone ID three, and it even tells us the referral URL. So where did this file originate from? Well, it originated from the zip file. So that's what we're able to identify from that. What's interesting is we can do the same thing on the zip file and watch the information that's provided. You're able to find out where it was originally downloaded from, the web page and what it was, what it was originally downloaded to us. So you're, it, it stores all this information in this alternative data stream. So just, it's a nugget of knowledge here, but just that's what's being stored. This is what's causing the problem. The fact that it has this zone identifier is what's causing us to have it blocked. This is how Windows is identifying a file that should be blocked. So how can we get around that? So the question becomes, how can we unblock the files? So let's open up, I made an unblocker database. Once again, this is not access specific. So the code I'm gonna show you can work anywhere. And I've just organized a couple modules basically by category, by subject. And the first one is we can do it manually. So I already demonstrated this in reality earlier. If we open up our folder, we can right click on any file, come down here and we can do unblock. And then you say, okay, now when you open the file, you no longer have that warning about a security risk because of it coming from an external source. You just have the standard macro warning and now you can actually enable it before the security warning relating to blocking unblocking files there is no way to bypass it without doing one of the approaches we're going to talk about but this is just a standard macro enable and now our database is fully functional a second solution here is as i've shown here and number two is we can use trusted locations to get around this so if we just minimize the database we delete the folder that had the files because we had already unblocked them. And let's extract them again. So I'll just demonstrate to you, but they are now once again blocked. They haven't been unblocked, okay? So they're blocked. So if we open up the database normally, there's the security risk bar again. Okay, if we come and we go into our options, we go into trust center, trust center settings, trusted locations, and we add the location where the files are located. So on my desktop, and we pick that folder there. And I say add it. Okay, okay, okay. We close it down. And we reload it. You'll notice that that security warning is gone once again. And because it's a trusted location, we don't even get the macro warning either. It automatically is just completely unlocked and fully functional for us but that file still hasn't had its alternative data stream modified, okay? It's still technically blocked, but we unblocked it sort of uh, by telling it, no, no, this is a trusted folder. Anything that's there, you can use. So if you move this to another folder, it'll be blocked again. Or if you transfer it to a coworker or something like that, it'll be blocked again until you create a trusted location. So sometimes this may work for you immediately, but it may not be the best solution in the long run. And, it, and that's where truly unblocking it is the better option. This brings us to our third option. And that is a utility. Uh, a lot of people are aware of Sys internal tools. Well, if you go on their website, you'll find that they have a stream utility and it's made just for this because 
you only have one real valid option is to delete the stream, the alternative data stream. So you can download the downloads at the top here. You can download this utility. And what I've done is I placed it right here on my desktop. You can place it wherever you like. And we can use it directly in the command prompt. So if we open it up, and what I do is I do a change directory, um, and I want to go into my desktop because that's where it's located. And then what you have to do is you have to call the exe, so stream64. And then I like doing the no banner because I don't need any of that. And then we can go delete. And then you supply the file name. So for the file name, you copy the path and you add the full file name of the file you want to unblock. And you run it. And it even confirms deleted. And if you now come here and you take a look at the properties, you'll see that that whole section about unblocking is gone because the alternative to data stream has been removed completely. So now this file is unblocked. And you can do that for any file. It doesn't make a difference. So we could do the, uh, I think it's notes.htm, I believe it was. And there we go. If we right click on it, it as well has been unblocked. So now if we open up the file, it is unblocked. There's no banner. There's no nothing. So now that's great going through the command prompt. What about automating this? Not very difficult. So I've deleted the folder. We're going to re-extract it so we have block files again. And you'll see here in the demo database that I have created two subroutines. Um, the first one is unblock a file. And the second one is unblock a folder. And it's as simple as taking this guy here. I have the example for you. We can bring this up a little bit. And all it is is we call our sub and we supply the file. We're using the file one on block file. You supply the full qualified path and file name and you just run it. And there you go, deleted zone. And one remark here is, and I have it here, but if you don't even want the pop-up, you can make that C instead of K and you won't even see it. Okay, it will just do it. And then if we go back to our files and we check, you'll see that it has been in fact unblocked. And if you check the notes, we haven't done the notes yet, it is still blocked. So you can do individual files or the second command was you can do an entire folder. So unblock a folder and you have an optional recursive or include subfolders. So if you run it, and there you go. You come now check. All the files in the folder have been unblocked. So whether you have one file there, 300, they'll all get unblocked. So that's the way that we can easily use some VBA to automate this sys internal utility. A fourth option is we can use FSO. We can use the file system object if we want. We can we can't delete the stream with FSO, but we can overwrite it. And basically we can overwrite it and remove the zone identifier. So we're just gonna wipe it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave a blank uh, alternative data stream. So that can be done with this function here. And it's simply FSO unblock file. And we provide the file. And as you can see here, we're gonna create a file system object we're going to open that file and we're going to open it for writing and we're simply going to write nothing. So we're going to overwrite the zone identifier data. And if we do that and we go check our file, it has now been unblocked. What's peculiar here, however, because all we've done is overwrite it. If we come and reopen our power uh, shell and we go and check the stream for the file and we run it, you'll see it still has a data stream. It still has an alternative data stream. It still has the zone identifier, 
But notice now how the length is at zero. And if we come here and run it, you'll see there is no zone identifier content because we wiped it to zero. There's nothing to return. So it's still there, the alternative data stream. It's just we cleared it out. I prefer to completely delete it. So I prefer one of the alternative methods personally. But uh, this does work. It does unlock the file. You'll be able to use it. You won't get that warning message. Um, so it is an option, but I much, much prefer one of the other options personally. And that brings us to a fifth method, which you see a lot online. It's using PowerShell. So um, you can get the first function from my website, my PS execute. So it's a simple function that allows us to uh, run any PowerShell command uh, through uh, VBA. Um, and then I built two uh, subroutines that call it. And the first one, unblock file. And the second one, unblock folder. And... I give a sample of their usage at the top. So if we just come here and put it, so I'm going to call ps unblock file, and I just provide the fully qualified path and file name that I want to unblock. And if I run it, you'll see we come back here and check our uh, folder, and indeed it has been unblocked. And if you check notes, it remains blocked because we did a file unblocking. We can similarly use the unblock folder to unblock all the files in a folder. And if we run that and come back now, because we did the entire folder, notes has been unblocked as well. Uh, for me, this is my preferred approach. Uh, PowerShell, it just works. I don't need any uh, external EXEs to download. In certain corporate environments, it's very hard to get third-party uh, files and programs approved for use. So I don't need to go through any of that. I'm not a big fan of FSO because it isn't removing it. It's just blanking it. So there's still a trail there. Trusted locations, once again, doesn't truly remove it. It does work, however, but and I don't always have to do this manually. I want to be able to do this through an automated means. So to me, the PowerShell is the way to go. And as you can see, it really is very simple. There's very little to it. Um, the function for the folder, as you can see, has that optional include subfolders. So if you're in that situation where it's not just the main folder, I want to do all the subfolders, well, then you just keep that at true, which is the default value anyway. And it will just simply add this recursive option and then it unblocks all the items that's what this does get child items so it gets all the files all the items within the folder and then it's going to run the unblock file command and if you have the recursive then it goes through all the subfolders as well so that's how hard or how easy it is it's a simple commandlet that they have already built we didn't have to do anything uh, they knew that there was going to be a need to unblock files using powershell so they built the commandlet. All we have to do is invoke it and call it. And that's how easy it is to unblock files. And you have at least five different approaches that I'm aware of to do so. So there you go. The, that's about it uh, as far as understanding how files get blocked, uh, which files get blocked. And uh, now you have five different ways of approaching unblocking them depending on your scenario and what you need to do. Um, for me, PowerShell is the way to go, but, uh, you know, drop me a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Is PowerShell the easier way or do you guys prefer a tool like SysInternal because, uh, you know, it's dependable coming from that source? Uh, do you just like the FSO? It's short, sweet, and you don't have to go through the intermediary of uh, PowerShell. Um, drop me a comment, guys. I'd love to hear from you. Um, thank you for spending your time with me. Like, subscribe, if you're able to share in any way through your network, connections, anything like that would be greatly appreciated. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day.